Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. So you guys have been asking me about budget streamers. So I have two budget friendly streamers here. We have the famous Blue Note 2i and the Peak and Pie. Now both of these devices I tested and I found both to be excellent, but they are for two different individuals. So which one is right for you? We'll check that out in this video. So make sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification so that you don't miss any of these videos. And let's go and talk about the two devices. The Ultra Audio Peak and Pie is a Raspberry Pi based streamer, DAC, and while the headphone jack may not be apparent, it is also a headphone amplifier. More on that later. So 3 in 1, all for 550 US dollars. I call that catching 3 birds with 5 big bills, or 5.5 bills, or whatever. You get the point. The competitor, the well-known Blue Note 2i is a streamer with a built-in DAC with a headphone amplifier for well, 550 US dollars. What are the chances? So let's be clear about one thing. Using either of these streamers will improve your sound quality if you're using currently a laptop or a computer. And I say this because I come from using laptops and computers before I started using streamers. And when I went to dedicated streamers, I saw a big improvement in my sound quality and how I played music. Streaming capability is not just about getting better sound. Yes, that is part of it, but think about the connections when you have a computer. I remember when I had a computer downstairs, it was a nightmare because I would have to have long USB cables or long cables, you know, make all the connections. I have to have a monitor somewhere. It's a lot of headache for less sound quality in most cases. I know there's some audiophile computers out there and stuff like that, but we're not talking about that in this video. So for the most part, using a dedicated streamer at this price point is a lot more convenient because getting a $550 setup for computer versus this, first of all, you get more for your money and it is dedicated for music playback instead of doing other things in the computer, which is inherently a noisy device. Now you do have to understand that both of these devices, even though they are dedicated streamers by name, both of them are very different and are catered towards very different people. So for example, the Blue Note 2i is more for those that don't want to tinker around. They want to just make it work, plug and play, make it easy. I don't want to go through all the headache. That's the Blue Note 2i and it does a fantastic job. That's why it has such a great reputation. You get great sound right out of the box. Whereas the Pecan Pie is more, you know, you're kind of tech savvy, you know your stuff, you know a little bit about digital stuff and you want to fiddle around a little bit to get that a little bit better sound, extra mile and at the sacrifice of some convenience and extra features. So two very different devices. And you can really tell that by just looking at the design itself and the build quality. The Blue Note 2i is very intuitive. It even has a uh, buttons on the top here, touch buttons, which is very nice. It has playback and also volume adjustment on the top. And it has a bunch of connections in the back. It works with many different softwares as we'll talk about. So very intuitive, very sleek design. It comes in black and white. Whereas the Peak and Pie, you can see right off the bat, is designed for a little bit more for those people that are looking to tinker a little bit. So it requires some attention. It's not plug and play like the Blue, uh, Blue Note 2i. You get that feeling that this was made by an enthusiast, made by someone who likes to tinker as well. Not so much done by a company that has been making streamers and trying to make it more convenient as possible. This is a little bit far off from being the most convenient streamer out there. But you do have to appreciate that the Pecan Pie is made out of mostly metal and seriously hefty compared to even the Blue Note 2i, which is slightly bigger. It has a heft to it. It has some metal parts that just speaks a little bit more quality when I'm holding it in my hand, whereas this is a little bit more plastic. So let's get to comparing the two. Starting off with the DAC, dual burr brown chips are used in both units. Not much to be said here. I think both sound good with internal DAC, but not incredible. 
I will say though, the DAC chip in the Pecan Pie seems to be better implemented than the Node 2i. Albeit, it's only my personal opinion. But both units can be connected to a separate DAC if you ever wish to upgrade down the line. Blue Node 2i can be connected to a separate DAC using a digital output, using coax or optical. While the Pecan Pie can be connected to a separate DAC using only the 4 USB on the side. These USBs also function as a means to connect to your external music storage, but not for the Rune Endpoint version. For the Rune Endpoint version, it is simply a means to connect a separate DAC. Four of them, at one time. Talking about versions, what in the world do I mean by versions? Don't get confused just yet, simply when it comes to streaming music, Pecan Pie has four different versions, or choices I should say, to choose from when you go to buy on their website. I got the Pecan Pie as a Rune Endpoint because I am a Rune nerd, but Volumio seems to be the most versatile one. So this is what I meant when I said the Pecan Pie requires a little bit more work from the end user, which is you. Um, is when I first connected this, it required some time. I think for me it was about 15 minutes, but I heard that it can take up to 75 minutes depending on your network speed to configure itself uh, in your network. So it's not just plug and play, you have to wait a little bit once you plug it in. And there's no lights in the front to indicate that it's on. The only thing that indicates that this is on is when you turn off the light and you see a little bit of light inside the unit itself. But that's about it. There is no indication on how long you have to wait. It doesn't have a loading time, uh, stuff like that. It doesn't have any of that indication. No LEDs in the front. So you just have to wait. And wait it out and after that is done if you want to use an external DAC then you can't just plug it in and play you have to go to this website which I'll link right now and you have to turn on the USB audio reboot the device wait for it to configure and then it will show up on your room so it requires a little bit of tinkering like I said it is not hard it is not I wouldn't say that it is you know, annoying, but it is something that you have to do. And some people like doing that. And some people like being a little bit more hands-on with the unit itself, which, you know, I didn't really mind either. Now, even stuff like this, the XLR, you know, uh, it's just here, there's no RCAs. There's only an adapter that comes with it. So a, li a little bit different from a Blue Note 2i, which is more, a little bit more user intuitive and easier to use and really doesn't need a guidance uh, or hand-holding as much if you're new to all this. In terms of versatility and features, the Blue Note 2i smacks the Pecan Pie in the head. The Note 2i, also a Rune endpoint, but it is Rune ready instead of Rune tested like the Pecan Pie. It also supports an incredible amount of platforms, enough for more than really necessary for normal day-to-day -day users. As well, it has AirPlay and Alexa along with their amazing BlueWorks app. All easily accessible and no tinkering required. You simply download the BlueWorks app if you wish to use it or you can use the AirPlay or even the Bluetooth although I don't recommend Bluetooth for high quality playback. And of course, a subwoofer out which is something that is often overlooked but highly convenient for adding subwoofers if ever required. Although the Pecan Pie does not have fancy subwoofer outputs, built-in Wi-Fi, or Bluetooth, it paid attention to some other aspects of listening to music than just versatility. Pecan Pie has the upper hand when it comes to the analog section. With truly balanced analog output stage, and while it may have only XLR on the unit itself, it comes with adapters that allow single-ended RCA cable connections. Furthermore, for additional $10 or $2.20 and, and yes, they are the exact same cable, but you have to account for shipping and depending on where you are, shipping is more expensive than the cable itself if bought alone. Anyways, with this cable, you are able to use this unit as a headphone amplifier, which I have tested with many of my headphones and found it superior to the one in the Blue Note 2i in sound quality and power. Also, you may get dual balanced headphone cable if you want to power the headphones straight out of the XLR, which also gives you more power to work with. The only complaint I have here is that I have to disconnect from my stereo system 
to use my headphones and connect it back after I am done each time. So while it may not be as fancy as the Blue Note 2i in features, Pekin Pie's sound quality is something to be reckoned with. So which one sounds better? I think that's the question that most of you guys are asking at this point. And first of all, I want to emphasize that before sound, you have to understand what your stance is. Do you want convenience or do you want a little bit better sound quality? Because the sound difference between the Blue Note 2i and the Pekin Pi is certainly there. The Pekin Pi is better sounding. But you have to ask yourself, are you willing to put up with a little bit of inconvenience and a little bit of a learning curve, if you so will, to use the Pekin Pi for that extra little sound quality? Now, better. I said better. Better how? Well, when I played the track, by the way, uh, the, the system I have here with the Worthdale Lintons uh, with the leak audio, that's one of the system that I used to test these two streamers. But I tested these streamers with many other speakers, including the Cap LS50 Meta, the Tannoy speakers, the Totem speakers, etc. So I tested it with a variety of different speakers, all volume matched, done properly as possible. Um, so there's that. So keep that in mind. Now, one of the tracks that I played was Anymore. And this track is interesting because this allowed me to test a little bit of warmth um, in two devices. And I found this track to have minimal differences. The main difference I found was that the vocals uh, seemed clear on the, uh, on the Peak and Pie, a little bit more clear sounding than the Blue Note 2i, which sounded a little bit more warm, but like a grainy kind of way, not, not like the luscious, warm, yet clear way but a little more grainy in comparison to the Pekin Pie side-by-side -side comparison. So you're not gonna hear massive differences with each individual track. It really matters what kind of track you're listening to, you know, how well it's recorded, you know, how it was recorded and stuff like that, stuff going on in the music itself. The second track I tried was by Chris Jones in his uh, Moonstruck album, Long After You're Gone. And this is a track that I play all the time. I think some of you guys are already familiar with this track. And the bass in the beginning when, when it hits and it rumbles on some speakers, you won't get that with some speakers if it's not entirely full range or it doesn't have that bottom uh, grunt. Thankfully though, gr the grunt is there with the worth deals, but it's not an overly grunt heavy speaker if you so will. It's not really bass heavy type of speaker. So when I played it with the Blue Note 2i, I didn't get that grunt and that string impact as much as I did with the Peak and Pie. The Pekin Pie was excellent in that it gave you more grunt, yet the strings were more clear sounding. Minute differences, but overall I would say the Pekin Pie sounded more natural, more like the real thing. And the imaging was better when the singer came in, long after you're gone, right in the middle. And the third track I played was Keith Don't Go, O to the Gimmer Twin. And in this track, again, um, the strings sounded more natural, more cleaner, the, the was a little bit more faster, um, more extended, almost more extended. Felt, felt like the high frequencies were just a little bit more refined on the uh, Peak and Pie versus the Blue Note Twi being a little bit more grainy. But if this was not a side-by-side -side comparison, I really wouldn't have mind the sound coming out of the Blue Note Twi. Blue Note Twi sounds excellent with this track especially but just a little bit of more refinement with the Peak and Pie. So those are the differences, not a huge difference. The sound stage imaging slightly better on the Peak and Pie, ever so slightly, but not a huge difference. Really depends on the track. I'm sure on very well recorded tracks, it's a little bit more of a difference than what I'm talking about right now. But with the music that I play, which is semi well recorded to you know, pretty well recorded, really didn't make a huge difference. Now with poor recordings, I almost noticed no difference. In fact, sometimes I find the Blue Note 2i to be slightly better, a little bit more forgiving if I'm playing like YouTube tracks or stuff like that, streaming off, you know, Apple Music or whatever. So it really comes down to, you know, do you want extra sound quality or do you want extra features? Two very different devices, like I said. Anyways, that was my comparison. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If this video was helpful to you, 
please subscribe, click that like button. Also, please consider joining our Patreon to keep us independent and keep these honest reviews and videos going. Until next time.